We saw the view from Kever Shmuel Anavi over to the to the city of Yerushalayim, the Jerusalem Hills. We are here at the entrance of the building which is above Shmuel Anavi's Kever, as the Pasuk says in Shmuel Aleph, chapter 25. Shmuel, Shmuel passed away. Israel and all the Israelites gathered together. they were masked him, they eulogized him. and they buried him in his home, which was at Ramah. And as we said earlier, this is identified as Ramah, the elevation is hill here. We spoke a little bit here now about the death of Shmuel Hanabi, now we're going to speak about his life. Shmuel Hanabi's life was a continuation of the life of Moshe Rabbeinu. The Maisa Avo Simon the Bani, the harbinger of the acts of the fathers, continued as a precedent in the hands and the actions of the children, that Shmuel Hanabi was a continuation, a continuity of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was a Navi, Shmuel Anavi was a Navi. Moshe Rabbeinu had problems with the Jewish people listening to him, Shmuel Anavi had problems with the Jewish people listening to them. Moshe Rabbeinu led the Jewish people for 40 years, approximately 40 years, Shmuel Anavi led the Jewish people not only as a prophet, but also as a leader of the Jewish people. Moshe Rabbeinu was Ki'ilu Amelech, a leader, a political leader, and a religious leader, and so too was Shmuel Anavi. And there is therefore a connection between Moshe Rabbeinu and Shmuel. And even in Tehillim, chapter 99, King David says that there is a direct connection between Moshe Rabbeinu and Shmuel. And we say this Tehillim 99 in Kabbalah Shabbat, in Kabbalah Shabbos, when we receive the Shabbos Queen. And I'm going to share with Daniel now this beautiful, beautiful nigun that we sing as Moshe and Shmuel are found in the same pasuk, in the same verse in Tehillim. Moshe Aaron bechalav, Ushmuel bekoide shema, koide el Hashem, velu yaneim be. Mitzvah. What happened in Mitzvah, the place called Mitzvah? 
in Shmuel Aleph, chapter 7, verses 7 to 9, the Navi tells us, And the Jewish people gathered in Mitzvah, and drew water, and poured it out before the Lord, and fasted on that day. And they said, We have sinned against Hashem. And Shmuel judged the children of Israel in Mitzvah. And when the Philistines heard the children of Israel were gathered together in Mitzvah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Shmuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering unto the Lord. And Shmuel cried out to Hashem for Israel, and Hashem answered him. Shmuel Aleph, chapter 7, verse 7 to 9. Shmuel Anavi, who was a shoifet, a judge of the Jewish people, for 11 years, amongst his 40 or so years of leadership of the Jewish people, from his bar mitzvah to the age of 52 when he died, 11 years of those was he was judging the Jewish people as he did a circuit of judgment around the towns of Israel. He was found worthy by Hashem of having his prayers heard on behalf of the nation, and the nation was saved from the hands of the Plishtim. What was his greatness that allowed him to merit such a miracle? The Navi states, And Shmuel spoke unto the house of Israel, If you do return unto the Lord with all your heart, and put away your foreign guards, gods and your Ashtarot from among you, and direct your hearts unto Hashem, and serve him only, he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Shmuel Aleph, chapter 7, verse 3. The power of Shmuel Anabi was to connect the Jewish people, to reconnect them with Hashem. To do tshuva, to do tshuva gemurah, to reconnect, to rekindle their relationship with Hashem. To be resilient and to reconnect, to bounce back in their backslidings, their distance from Hashem through the Avodah Zorah that was influencing them in the towns of the Canaanites. They came back, they got rid of their Ashtaros, they got rid of their Avodah because of the urgings of Shmuel Anabi, as Moshe Rabbeinu did to the Jewish people, and therefore they reconnected with Hashem. And it says, when Shmuel was offering up his burnt offering, in Shmuel Aleph chapter 7 verse 9, he blew, brought up his offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel, but the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them and they were smitten down before Israel. What does this mean? In the midst of Shmuel and Abi offering his offering, a great sound, a great thundering came from Shemayim, from heaven, sent by Hashem, which discombobulated, which confused the Plishtim, and because of their discomfiture, the Jewish people were able to rout them and destroy them. The Ralbag tells us, that Mishkan Shiloh had already been destroyed and public altars had not yet been in use. And therefore, Shmuel's offering his korban was offered on a private bama, a private altar built by Shmuel, an extraordinary demonstration of Shmuel's special connection with Hashem. And then as soon as David explains, when the nation saw that Shmuel's offering was consumed by fire from Hashem, they knew that Hashem accepted his tefillah, his prayer, and they knew they were then assured of victory against the Plishtim. And they saw when his offering was consumed by fire, thunderous sounds from Hashem, from heaven, rained down upon the Plishtim. And therefore, it was the connectability, the kirva, the connection of Shmuel to Hashem, which inspired the Jewish people to reconnect in their amuna to Hashem. And that is the idea, says the, the Malbim, of all Malchus Shemaim, that because of the efforts of Shmuel Anabi, they he inspired the Jewish people to bring down all Malchus Shemaim, the yoke of heaven, to reconnect with heaven, to reconnect with Hashem, and he reconnected the relationship between the Jewish people and Hashem. The single-minded dedication of Shmuel in his mission, in his mission to serve the Jewish people, is evidenced by the fact that it says, in Shmuel Aleph, Samuel 1, chapter 7, verse 15. And Shmuel judged Israel all the days of his life. 
And he went from year to year in the circuit to Bet El, to Gilgal, and to Mitzpah. And he judged Israel in all those places. And his return was to Ramah. He returned here to Ramah, this elevated place, this place where we saw, which we see all of Jerusalem from this place, this high place, this elevated place, Ramah. And there was his house. His house was right here in Ramah. And there he judged Israel, and he built an altar unto the Lord. Shmuel Aleph, chapter 7, verse 17. Shmuel and Nabi did not force the Jewish people to come to him for halakhic decisions. Rather, he traveled to them. Such was his dedication. The people hear the law and return to God. He went to them, to where they were. And he traveled there for 11 years on this circuit to judge the people in all the towns of Israel, as we mentioned. And because of that, he aged before his time and died at the age of 52. When he could no longer travel, he returned home here to Ramah, a high mountain just outside overlooking Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, known today as Nabi Samuel, the Nabi Shamuel, known in this place as Nabi Shmuel. And there is a tradition going back over 1,300 years in, the, in 700 CE that distinguishes this place as the, de the, the death place, the burial place of Shmuel and Nabi. It's an old tradition. And therefore, we have a great possibility and tradition that this is the place of Ramah and this is the place he's buried. But he didn't only die here, he lived here, he judged here. And what was the greatness of Shmuel and Nabi? That when he brought a private offering in the name of the people to save them from the police team, he alone led them to do tshuva. He alone traveled to judge the people. Aloneness, his aloneness, his uniqueness, his single-mindedness was then mean, means a single-minded dedication to his mission, dedicated in service of Hashem. Let me end with this unbelievable medras from Shmos Rabbah, Parsha Tezayin Piska Dalet. says the following, what was the one difference between Moshe Rabbeinu and Shmuel Hanavi? The Medr says, Shmuel, Shmuel haya Torah b'chol Medina Medina v'shofei k'deh shelo yitztaru l'avo etzlo. Shmuel bothered himself. He dedicated himself. He made the great effort to go out to the Jewish people to judge them. Whereas Moshe Rabbeinu v'yayishev Moshe l'ishpot etaam. Moshe sat and the Jewish people came to them. The continuity of Shmuel and Abi that continued the work of Moshe Rabbeinu was Moshe Rabbeinu sat and judged the people as they came to him. Shmuel continued, extended, uh, added to, developed, went beyond the efforts of Moshe Rabbeinu. He carried on the work of Moshe Rabbeinu by saying, I'm not going to only allow the people to come to me. I am going to go to them. I'm going to do kiruv. I'm going to do outreach. I'm not going to do only inreach and wait for them to come to me. I'm going to go reach out to them and go to their cities and give them chizuk and inspire them with my presence and my kedusha and my, my connection to the Shekhinah. That's our job. It says, Moshe kibel Torah misinai umusarul Yeshua, the Yeshua l'zkeni, l'zkeni the Devim, and the Devim l'anchek nesetagdola. The great link between Moshe Rabbeinu and Yeshua is the l'zkeni and the Devim. We have to understand and appreciate the depth of what Navi is. Navi is a continuation of Hakol Gadol Velo Yasaf, the great voice that was heard at Mount Sinai, is continuing that sound, is continuing in Hashem's voice as He puts His voice into the hearts and souls of the Nevi'im. We have to understand that that's the continuity. Navi is so crucial to our Messiah. Umisaruha. Moshe Rabbeinu, Umisaruha Le Yoshua. Yoshua Le Zkenim, Le Zkenim Le Nevi'im. The great link of Torah, Torah Moshe, into our day is the Navi, to understand the Navi and the message of the Nevi'im. We have to continue their Navi, their, uh, their efforts and their understanding. And therefore we too, when we receive from Anshay Knesset Zagdola, and we receive from our Rebbeim, our teachers, we have to take the Torah and say, I'm going to take the Torah and advance it, develop it, go further. Take the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, take the Torah of Shmuel and Navi, and go out and do outreach. Reach out to people, to our brothers and sisters who are not yet affiliated, not yet knowing about the beauty of Torah, not having experienced the Shabbos, not having experience at Yantif, not experience the beauty and gishmak of a chidush in Torah. To sit down with them in the basement, come to me. Come to me the base measures. Go out to your friends and say, 
let's meet, let's talk, let's schmooze. And let's go together to the base measures. Let's go to a Shabbaton. Let's go to a Gateways program. Let's go to an NCSY program. Reach out. Shmuel and Navi reached out to the Jewish people. And so too we must carry on that continuity. Our job, our legacy, our Maisa of Osimul is to carry on that outreach level to the Shabbat project. Anything that we're involved in, to go and do outreach just like, Yosh, uh, just like Shmuel and Navi did. And in that way we can bring the Shekhinah to all the people and inspire them to reconnect to Avinu Shabbat Shemayim.